Sorry, I don't know. Okay, the expanding drum is like a little belt sander. You know, it gives you a, a, a narrow surface of an abrasive. Um, so it's got a curve to it. Great for repair and, and surface blemish removal um, or, or polishing. The heat involved, um, keep it wet. It, Yeah, um, that that that's a he's complaining about the uh, the heat generated by the belts and it's a significant factor to that. It's called Trizac. It's made by 3M. It's uh, an aluminum oxide encapsulated belt. Uh, when I had a couple belts there and they're green and yellow, that's those. Um, they do generate a lot of heat, which takes a lighter touch and more cooling. Some people love them and go through them. Uh, that's the only belt they'll use. Other people don't like the heat and um, go back to it. It comes down to personal choice. But yes, they make heat. So lighten up. <laughs> Each abrasive product will have its own family of characteristics and that's the negative on that. But they also make a cerium belt in the same format, which is a, it'll revolutionize your shop. Sweet product when we sell in discs or, or belts, it's wonderful. Someone else had, yes. The question is about finding used equipment and adapting it. Um, you you're, you're, you just gotta use your imagination. I mean, if you see something you think that could do something, um, yeah, it's worth a try. Looking for used equipment on eBay or some of the bulletin boards, uh, you, could, you could post, hey, I need an old bench grinder. Does anyone have one to spare? Um, good luck. <laughs> Yeah, really, it's, um, it's hard finding good used equipment out there. Most of us, once we find something, even though we're, we're not using it at the time, we know we're going to need it two years down the road, and as soon as you get rid of it, that's when you need it. So, All right, the question is a different format. Uh, on a flat lap, uh, some diamond discs are totally full surface electroplated, and others are little dot patterns. That's the manufacturer of the diamonds. Uh, little dot pattern are generally made either by abrasive technology or 3M. Um, and between those two, they're made differently. Uh, it seems like the abrasive technology have little diamond electroplated dots glued down. And if you're careless with your glass, you can dig a corner in and shave them off. Uh, and they're usually more expensive than full plated. Uh, 3M, when they're making their discs, they actually glow, grow the metal that holds a diamond through a very tough fiber mesh, and it's very hard to knock them off, and they're even more expensive. But uh, both are very efficient. Uh, a lot of people like the little dot pattern because it allows the ground glass to wash away uh, between the diamonds. I find with the, the flat ones, the diamond washes away anyway by itself just through centrifugal force. So. I don't notice a difference between them other than cost. If you're, um, you know, if, if the manufacturer gives you a good deal on them, there, there's your, there's your answer right there. It's what your best deal is. I'm working on some to be selling, but basically, it's just got to stick the two together. I mean, if, if. Um, Par par paraffin is a, is a little brittle, beeswax is a little soft, you could mix the two and probably come close. Uh, you really just need, you're basically gluing them together with, with, with hot wax, which means you have to heat both pieces of glass and a uh, hair dryer or heat gun. You've got to be careful with your own glass and how much heat and how you apply it. But uh, once it's together as a sandwich with wax holding it together, it, sh it should be safe and then uh, you just gotta warm it up to heat it off, to slide it off. No, but it's better than polishing all the chips out. Um, a lot, you know, as, as far as cleaning the wax off of, off of the glass uh, after you've used the uh, stacking wax. Um, yeah, wax is, is nasty, acetone probably, or you know, even soapy water. Um, pardon? Turpentine. Turpentine. Uh, a solvent. I'm just curious because I'd like to try the technique I had 
Right. Well, in, 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 in optical houses, where I learned about this, is where they're cutting lenses for lasers. They got all these uh, dichroic coated lenses, and they, they stack them up eight or 10 tall, and then a piece of plate glass on top and bottom, and they just drill through, and they save the core. They slide it apart, and they got all these perfect little disks. Um, so turpentine, uh, but with any solvent, um, wear gloves, protect yourself. Acetone is probably what I use the most for cleaning. And my word of caution with acetone, even though your body, as it does what it does, it, it makes a little acetone. So acetone is not super hazardous to you, except in volume. But if you've got adhesive on your hands or something like that, and you use acetone to clean it off, it just makes it so loose that your skin will be more readily available to absorb both the acetone and whatever's in it. So that's how people develop sensitivities to a lot of chemicals. So gloves, nothing, nothing but. And if you do get glue or, or adhesive or any kind of chemical on you, that's when you go to the sink and you get the Gojo and the, the pumice cleaner and clean it off that way. Yeah. But um, it, it's just a logical process. And I'm, I'm just going to end it where I started. We all do the same thing differently. So develop your, your language with uh, grinding and polishing if you have to. And if you can learn to make your glass so you don't have to grind and polish, you're way ahead of all of us. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you.